going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Winner's Circle. It's your boy, Cody. And I am here with another Live Eviction episode. Before we jump into it, make sure you are subscribing to the channel, turning on those bell notifications because you don't want to miss out on any episode. I dropped an episode with Tucker. Make sure you go back and check that out if you haven't done so already. I'm covering The Anonymous, the new show that is on USA Network and also on Peacock. A lot of content coming out. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm loving interacting with you guys. I'm loving all the comments that are going on. So let's jump into it. This was an HOH week that I had mentioned in our last week's eviction episode to be a very pivotal and very crucial HOH week, right? So I had mentioned that I felt this HOH week kind of held a lot of power. Somebody could win HOH and really solidify themselves for this portion of the game. We are now in jury. The first member of the jury has went through and we have our first member now is going to be sitting around and probably dying of boredom because when you're in the game, you're playing the game and your head is going at hundred miles an hour. And it may be nice to be in that jury house to kind of like unwind a little bit, but being the first one there also feels like it could be boring. So, you know, spoiler alert coming in. Quinn is our first member of the jury and this week's HOH was won by Chelsea. So I'm going to go through here some of the things, some of the feelings that I had with this HOH. It, I didn't feel like it was the greatest run HOH by Chelsea. I thought her first HOH was incredibly done. I thought she set herself up well outside of, you know, the issues that she ran into, you know, in the upcoming weeks with Tucker winning HOH and her being a potential target. But I thought after after having that, she kind of lost control of the house. She regained control when T-Core sent home Tucker on her HOH. And I felt like Chelsea had a really good opportunity right now to solidify herself moving forward. Now, Chelsea starts the week with nominating Angela and Chemo. Now, I don't have a problem with this because one, I feel like Angela now has been in the game for too long. Her paranoia is kind of run its course on me. And if I was a player in the game, she's not somebody that I can ever trust. She's not somebody that I can work with. She's not somebody that I could share information with. And so for me, that's a threat. Like that is a threatening person to have in there because if I'm not going to share information and I can't really trust what this person's doing or saying, that's not somebody that I would love to have in the house. Like that's somebody that I would like to get out of the house. And so Chelsea starts the week off nominating Angela and Chemo. Now, Chemo going on the block, I can understand because he had been on the block the past couple of weeks. She has a pretty good relationship with him. He seems to be fairly logical. And so it wasn't like he was being bitter. Now, do I think Chemo will put Chelsea on the block? Yes, because again, it's an easy thing to do to just nominate the person that had nominated you in the past. And so she was in a situation where she didn't want to burn other bridges in the house of people that she had been working with. You know, she has Mackenzie, she has Cam, she's tight with T Core. So she's fairly limited in who she can nominate, which is why we saw Chemo on the block. And we saw Angela on the block. Two good nominees, in my opinion. Where the week started to get away from her is when the Angela train and the Hurricane Angela came flying through the house. Now, Angela's on the block. We've seen this before. We've seen Angela on the block. We've seen her spiral. We've seen Angela spiral when she's the HOH. And... I was very confused by Chelsea allowing this to influence her HOH. I'm going to dive into it a little bit more, but early on, we're going to hear from this week's sponsor, a sponsor that we've had on the podcast before, Fume. Have you heard that the flavored air category is quickly becoming the leading alternative to vaping and smoking? It's a whole new movement towards better habits led by the sponsor of today's episode, Fume. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device. Flavored air isn't like vaping. If vapor was compared to sticky soda, fume cores are closer to herbal teas. Fume has lots of delicious flavors to choose from like crisp mint, orange vanilla, and new peach blush. 
With flavored air, you can satisfy your oral fixation through a passive diffusion system that utilizes no electronics, vapor, or combustion. The flavor is great and it allows you to have kind of that fixation that you're looking for if you just reach in your pocket, you breathe in, and you get the flavor in your mouth. And Fume has served over 300,000 customers and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, use my code CIRCLE to get a free gift with your journey pack. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code CIRCLE to get a free gift with your order today. I'd like to thank Fume for sponsoring this week's episode. Let's get back into it. All right, so we're back. So Chelsea lets Hurricane Angela kind of get in her ear a little bit, right? For me, Angela should have been someone that you target, Or someone that should have been targeted earlier in the game. Now we're at a point where there's nine people left in the house. We're in the jury phase. You want to keep people in the house that are not going to put you on the block. That's what's really important. And that's what's really important moving forward. You want to weaken people that have strong bonds around them. You want to weaken players in this game that other people are going to protect. Because at the end of the day, you're now at a point of the game where you want people, you want as many people in this house as possible that are going to keep you off the block. Because anything can happen. Anything can happen. A double a double eviction is right around the corner, right? Like it feels like we're at that point of the game where somebody can flip, somebody can turn. And that's kind of what we saw this week. And so it was really interesting for me to see Chelsea get influenced by someone like Angela because, you know, Kimo and Angela are on the block. They want to keep the nominations the same. Chelsea puts two people on the block. At this point of the game, you want two people on the block that you're nominated, that you're nominating, and one of those people going home. So that, that to me is minimal blood on your hands. Minimal. You have two people on the block. Nominations stay the same. One person goes home. That's kind of what it felt like the week was going to play out like because Chelsea was mentioning that everybody seemed to be on board with it. Mackenzie was on board with it. Who Mackenzie and Chelsea now seem to have this like really close bond. And, and Mackenzie seems to be somebody that Chelsea really leans on. And so we're seeing conversations. We see a group of them talking in the HOH room, five of them, the five that they describe themselves as, which is Cam, um, Chelsea, Mackenzie, Quinn, Leah. Then you have t Kimo, and Rubina. And then you have Angela, who's just the outlier, right? Like Angela is the person that like, we're, we're all blown away that she's still in the house. I'm so confused by it, but that's neither here nor there. So they're all talking up in the HOH room. They see Angela kind of like walking around by herself. They're talking about like, is she going to come talk to me? Chelsea's mentioning this. She's going to talk to me before nominations. So everybody's on board once the nominations go through of Kimo and Angela to keep the nominations the same. And I thought that was great. I thought it would have been a very well run. Is it the most entertaining HOH? Is it the most entertaining week that we've seen? No. But for this part of the game, as the HOH, you don't want to be entertaining. If you're a player in this house, you want everything to go smooth, two people on the block, one person goes home, you can't compete in the HOH, so now you only have one person you have to worry about winning the HOH. If any of the other people win, there's a strong chance that they're going to keep you safe because you just did that for them. So you're in a really good position. Chelsea was in that position, right? She nominates Angela and Chemo. We see conversations happening between Mackenzie and Quinn, which I thought this was spot on. Mackenzie and Quinn start talking about, why are we going to send Angela home? Angela's not really a threat. For Mackenzie specifically, she's like, she's not putting me on the block. So sending chemo home would have been the right move this week. Keep the noms the same, send chemo home. Why do you send chemo home? Now, personally, I really like chemo. Personally, he's probably the most likable one in the house. And for me, at least, I'm saying in my opinion, you know, everybody can have different, different opinions. But Kimo is the most likable person for me. But Kimo's on the block. There's Rubina and Tcor. 
off the block, the two of them are crazy tight with chemo. So that's, again, we we saw, and we saw Quinn talking about this this week. That's a group of three. That group of three is dangerous purely on the basis of the numerical advantage that they have over everybody else. Because we saw that a group of five were working together, quote unquote, working together. But realistically, that group of five had fractures, right? So, you know, you have Chelsea, who's close with Cam, Chelsea, who's close with McKenzie. Are they really that close with Quinn and Leah? Do they fully trust it? No, because they kind of feel like Leah and Quinn are a duo. So there's kind of fractures in that group of five, but they're more so realistically thinking, okay, we have numbers here, so this is beneficial. They only have three. Quinn being on the block is very important to try to send home because you weaken that group of three. Now, when that group of three gets fractured, that could allow you to get yourself even closer with one of the people in that group of three. Now, there's pushback that can come from that. And Chelsea was a little bit aware of this. She was mentioning that if she was the person that sent home one of those three, that could cause the other two to then want to target her, which I can understand. I can understand that. But now you're you're walking a fine line of trying to play the middle a little bit too much. And that'll tend to irritate other people if they become aware of it. Like for me, if somebody was kind of doing their own bidding, it's understandable. I'd be like, all right, I'll roll with it. I can go with you on this one. But if I'm somewhere where I'm like, I can clearly see that you're doing your own bidding and you're trying to line yourself up with that three while also staying close with us. That to me, I'd be like, well, maybe you're someone that I need to target once I have the opportunity. Because what everybody should start thinking about now is jury votes. Everybody needs to start thinking about how am I playing to the jury? How am I going to get votes at the end of this game? And if I'm playing against somebody who seems to be playing really well and very well insulated with everyone in the house, and I noticed that somebody is playing for the jury, we talked about it all the time on every season I played. If we noticed that somebody was trying to play to the jury and trying to play to like the whole house, we would send them home. We'd be like, all right, if you want to play to the jury, then you can be in the jury. That was always like my favorite quote to say. You want to play to the jury? Go and be in the jury. That's that's all I care about. And so Chelsea is kind of in this interesting dilemma. Now, the only issue that I have with it is that a lot of this was stemming from the conversation that Angela has with Chelsea. So the week starts off, Kimo and Angela are on the block. Chelsea is like, I want to target Angela. Then McKenzie comes to her and is like, we think that we should go after chemo. Chelsea then flip-flops to that and goes, okay, I'm cool with that. Let's go after chemo, break up the three. Then Angela comes to her and shares what we all know to be as like just paranoid information. None of the information that comes from Angela can be taken as truth. Everything should be taken with a grain of salt. Nothing she says should make you reevaluate what you're doing in the game. It just should never, it should never do that. And it should never, even to add another layer to that, someone that's on the block should never be somebody that sways what you're going to do in this game because they're clearly just saying whatever they have to. They need to plant seeds. They need to do what they have to do to make sure that they stay safe. And it was so interesting to me to have Angela go to Chelsea, which we all saw the footage. Now, Chelsea is sleeping at this point. She doesn't see the footage. So it's understandable with Big Brother and paranoia kind of always just – paranoia is just always kind of whispering in your ear. It's always like, well, could they have done that? Maybe. And what I will say is if you're a player in the game, you never want to give people a reason to not trust you. Now – Quinn never did that. This entire game, it was only a matter of time. I mentioned it early in the season. I said this when he chose to not tell people about his deep fake HOH. I was like, right now, everybody is talking about how much they love Quinn. And we don't mind that he didn't tell us about the deep fake because we trust Quinn. Everybody's in the honeymoon stage. That happens. He doesn't tell everybody about the deep fake. 
Everybody's cool with that then. Then t and Chemo blow up the Collective Alliance. How did they find out about that? Quinn. Okay. Now Quinn did the deep fake. He didn't tell anybody. He told Chemo and t about um, the Pentagon Alliance that blew up the Collective. Okay. Now I don't know how much I can trust him. Tucker kind of exposes his game and all this stuff starts to compound. So it was very easy for Chelsea to believe like, oh yeah, Quinn might have started a group of five with them to try to protect himself. But it's just so hard for me to be like, why would you listen to Angela? Like Angela just, Angela has been a loose cannon in this game. She's off the cuff. She says things. She kind of makes up her own truths and then spews that to people. She doesn't even really fully remember what she said. We then saw a conversation between her and Chelsea after Leah goes to her crying, feeling betrayed by her. And she's asking Chelsea, Remind me what I said. I can promise you this, people. Nobody needed to remind me what I said in the Big Brother house. Now, granted, I'm not going to draw a comparison to Angela myself, but like, what are we doing? If somebody is coming to you asking, remind me what I said, you should immediately be like feeling regret for ever even listening to what they said. So the reason why I felt like Chelsea's HOH was run pretty poorly was because she flip-flopped all over the place. Started the week wanting Angela out, then was okay with having Chemo out, wanted the nominations to stay the same, then she wanted Mackenzie to use it. It was almost like she didn't really, she was like looking at Mackenzie to kind of give her the answers. They were talking back and forth. So it was just like, it was a very erratic HOH. And at this point in the game, you can't have erratic HOHs. You just simply can't. You need to go in there with a clear-cut plan. And if you don't have a clear-cut plan, if you don't know, I'm going to target these people and these are going to be my easy targets and I'm going to keep nominating the same as I'm home, don't win the HOH. Simply put, I said this when I was on All-Stars. I said it when I came off. I've talked about this on the Winner Circle. If you don't have clear-cut targets that you can go after – or you are straight up going to go on the block and go home, if you don't win the HOH, you shouldn't be winning it. So if you don't have targets that you know you're going to go after and you're going to put them up and that's who the one of these two, if this one goes up or this one goes up, I want this one. If I can't get this one, I want that one. There's no reason for you to win HOH outside of if you don't win, you're going on the block and going home. And that, that to me wasn't the case with Chelsea. And so although I felt this was a really crucial HOH to win, I don't necessarily know that it was like super needed for Chelsea. And I don't know how the ripples of this HOH are going to affect her game down the road because I just don't think it was played well. Now, granted, she may be able to spin it in a way of, you know, yeah, Kimo, I did put you on the block. And yeah, the veto was used on Angela, but... You know, I put a bigger target up next to you, ultimately keeping you safe. Like that's all fine and dandy. Like that's a, it's a nice thing to say, but like, I know if I went HOH, I'd be like, okay, but I was also one of the two people that were the most expendable to you. And you probably didn't care if I went home, which is why I was on the block. So now you can go up like, and also if you're not like, if you're Rubina and T-Core, you may think the same way. It's like, well, you were going to go after chemo who you know is in our group and then would you have gone after us if maybe he won the veto or you know if if things didn't happen or didn't unfold the way it's just like the paranoia that comes in and people just come up with scenarios in their head it's like i don't know how these ripples are going to affect are going to affect uh chelsea's game down the road i do want to say there's another thing i wanted to comment on because i'm watching the show and i was very like intrigued by quinn Right. And so Quinn is having a conversation with Chelsea in the back room. You know, Chelsea is talking about how, like, I really, really love you as a person. I really respect you. I really wanted you to do well in this game. Quinn also had a conversation previously with Mackenzie. Mackenzie mentioned him, like, you know, I'm going to use the veto. It just feels right. I just feel like I'm not going to go after Angel, but like, I don't know who Chelsea's putting on the block. Like, there's so much stuff that happens in the Big Brother house that if you are a player, if, if I have a future player, watching this channel and you go on big brother you need to just try to take 
your paranoia or your emotions out of the game because the writing is always usually on the wall. Like, for example, in the past, Cedric won the HOH. He didn't want to put Quinn on the block, even though Tucker wanted him on the block. That to me is a perfect inkling, those who are working together, because the reasoning to want to put Quinn up was perfect. And Cedric didn't want to do it. Like, if you're in the game and something like that happens, it's it's not like, well, and then people kind of like be like, no, we didn't have the numbers. Oh no, we didn't. Have, that's all bullshit. That's all like big brother terminology. It's no. I'm probably working with this person and I have a good relationship with them. So I don't want to put them up. When Mackenzie tells Quinn, I'm using the veto and I don't know who Chelsea's going to put on block. Like your bullshit meter should be going off on a thousand. You're using the veto. Now, if Quinn didn't notice that Chelsea and Mackenzie are fairly close, then he's just too enamored by Leah because He's not paying attention to all the social interactions and social cues and things you got to pick up on. Like people gravitate towards each other in this game and people show enough that if you're paying attention, you'll you'll kind of pick up on who's kind of hanging out with who, who's getting close to who. And so when Mackenzie shares to Quinn that she's going to use the veto on Angela and she doesn't know who's going on the block, that to me would be like, it would immediately like scream to me, that's, you're full of shit. Okay, Quinn goes and does what he needs to do. He goes and talks to Chelsea. Now, for me, it's always got to be like, well, where did this come from? Like, why would you think to put me on the block? Like, we've been working together. We're in a group of five. Like, where did this come from? And he needed to try to figure that out before the veto meeting. Like, where did this come from? Because I feel like if Quinn was able to find out this came from Angela, he would have done a better job of maybe trying to like deflect and possibly, possibly even going as far as maybe the veto doesn't get used because Mackenzie and Chelsea were like in the midst of making a big move, quote unquote, big move. Is Quinn going home a big move? Yeah, because it really wasn't the path. And I think Quinn is a good player. So yeah, it's a big move. Was it the right move? I don't know because I don't know. I don't know if it was the right move because there is that like component of maybe Quinn, if he wins HOH, he's got Leah who's closest to him. And then maybe he tries to, you know, stay true to the visionaries who ultimately are no longer an alliance because that's just kind of blown up and, and is not a thing anymore because now Rubina is closer to Chemo and t than Quinn is. Quinn feels a little bit closer to Cam. So like, I don't know that. Quinn would have won and put up Chelsea because I also feel like Quinn is enough of a gamer to know three people in this house that are attached at the hip when it comes to an HOH winning. So now there's three versus one person you have to worry about because those three people are going to be making their decisions together. They're going to be voting together. They're going to be deciding who goes on the block together. They're most likely going to be deciding who's going to win the game together. So it's like, if you're playing to those three, then you're kind of getting yourself into trouble unless you're playing to those three to try to get those three votes at the end of the game. So it's like, I don't know that Quinn would have won HOH and not put two of them up, to be honest, because he just did it. Like he just did it. He just had two of them on the block and then made the poor mistake of putting Joseph on the block. But, you know, like I feel like Quinn winning HOH, if he would have won it again, he would have went right back after them because like Rubita and Kimo were on the block with him and then he made the really poor mistake of putting Joseph up. But it's like Quinn wasn't going to put Chelsea on the block. So it's like why do you send people home that aren't going to target you? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like I'm trying to rationalize and see where Chelsea's head was at. And I know there's probably conversations on the live feeds that like, <clears throat> speak to it a little bit more, but I'm just like, as a game move, it doesn't really make sense. This season of Big Brother doesn't seem to make sense. People continuously are sending home people that I don't think would nominate them. Like, is Quinn someone you can trust? Probably not. But is Quinn someone that's going to put you on the block if he wins next week? Probably not. So you want to keep people in the house that in the near future 
aren't going to put you on the block, which allows you more time to get well insulated in the house. And then you gain more trust with people so that more numbers aren't putting you on the block. I just, it's been such an interesting season and I've just been watching week after week, poor decisions on the HOH, like poor decisions by the HOH. HOHs are putting up close allies of theirs. Close allies are going home on the HOHs week. Like Tucker went home on T-Core's week. Joseph went home on Quinn's week. Like Quinn goes home on Chelsea's week. Like I don't feel like Quinn was that big of a threat to Chelsea. So to send him home was kind of interesting to me. And I'm very interested to see how this plays out. Now, I don't know who's going to win the next HOH, but this kind of this game kind of has a really interesting way of just turning everything on its head. It's really I was just talking to someone about this. This season has been very hard to predict. So that's one I think it's a good thing cuz it's enjoyable. Like each week I've been kind of like excited to see who wins the HOH and then being like I wonder how they're going to play it and then I get to comment on it. Whereas in season prior, seasons prior, usually you kind of know how it's going. But I will say this has been a very unique season and a very interesting season, a very captivating season. So I'm really eager to see. Like I'm, I, I always get super excited to wake up Friday morning and go to Twitter immediately and see who won the HOH. So that's been fun. Really, in the past, I haven't been that excited for it. I will say there was a big lull this week without the BBAI arena. So like not having the AI arena kind of stunk, stunk on ice. I didn't really like it. Not having Julie. Like I can't believe I didn't bring this up earlier in the episode, but like this dude, Jerry, stunk. Like stunk. Now, I don't know if I'm kind of being harsh because I just like really love Julie. And I think that what we noticed tonight is the show just isn't the same without Julie. There's an air that Julie brings to the show. There's an air that Julie brings to hosting and it's just really unmatched. I don't know that there's anybody that can do Julie's job. There's not a person. If Julie decides to ever stop Big Brother, there's not going to be somebody that can fill that spot. Just simply put, there's just not somebody that can fill that spot. I just felt like this guy, Jerry was just like, now granted, it's not an easy thing to do to host, right? Like I, I'm, I'm commenting, like if I got thrown up there, I'd probably perform the same way. I just was like, dude, this guy, Jerry just feels like he felt like uncomfortable in his skin on the stage. And I'm like, bro, you're like an actor. Like, shouldn't you be able to do this? I thought, I thought he was going to perform a little bit better. Anyway, you know what? This is a good one. I think we can leave an emoji for this, this emoji, leave this emoji where the person's like putting the crosses up. If you didn't think Jerry was any good. If you're like nobody but Julie, that's what this means. Nobody but Julie. Julie's the best host and the only host. So that's what I want to see in the comments. Um, I appreciate you guys. Listen, how did you think Chelsea did this week? Did you think Chelsea had a good HOH? Did you think Chelsea had a poor HOH? Do you think that Chelsea was doing well kind of playing into the three? And do you think that that's going to benefit her with the three because she still has Mackenzie, she still has Cam. So she still has a good number of people that will probably keep her safe. Um, or not. Do you think that it was it was kind of tough because now she's kind of putting herself in, in, a, in a tough situation because I'm nervous that people are going to start noticing that Chelsea is a threat and a danger to win the game. And if people notice that you're a danger to win the game too early, then you're probably not going to win the game. So um, let me know what you guys think. Listen, I'm still having a blast every, every week covering this. It's been amazing. This video is going to be dropping Friday. Spoilers are going to be coming out. I'm fired up. I'm going to be dropping another episode covering the anonymous again, coming up on Tuesday. So make sure you are subscribing to the channel, turning on those notifications. If you're watching along on the anonymous, be sure to check the show out. It's a really cool, really fun, unique show. We got our boy Xavier on there. I did an interview with Xavier that dropped this week. So check that episode out as well. Listen, as always, I appreciate you guys joining me here on the winner's circle. Always, always will appreciate the support. Again, I can't be here without you because you guys keep me going here. I love it. I appreciate you guys. And I will see you next time.